Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and today is an exciting day as the Oculus Link update for Oculus Quest is now live, enabling you to connect your Quest to a PC to play full PC VR games. Now, although the official Oculus Link cable from Oculus isn't released yet, you can test the Oculus Link software by using a good quality USB 3 cable. Now, please note that the cable that comes in the box with the Oculus Quest won't work with Oculus Link as it needs a USB 3 Gen 1 or Gen 2 cable with a USB-C connector that can support both power and data. Now don't worry, I've been testing a dozen different cables over the last week or so, and I found a cable that performs well and won't break the bank, which will be ideal until the official cable releases. So in this video, I'll cover what equipment you need, how to get set up with Oculus Link on your PC and Oculus Quest, and then I'll test it out with some games from both Oculus and Steam VR to see how it performs. And then finally, I'll give you my conclusion at the end of the video. Now I've provided links to all the products that I've mentioned in this video in the description down below. These are my personal Amazon affiliate links and it just means that if you use these links to purchase any of the products that I've recommended, it doesn't cost you any extra but helps support me and the channel and I'd really appreciate it. I hope you find this video useful and without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so first up, let's start with the equipment that you'll need to get Oculus Link up and running. Obviously, you'll need an Oculus Quest running at least software version 11 or higher. To update your Quest, go to settings in the main menu, then go to see all, about, and check there if you're running the latest version. You'll also need a Windows 10 PC with the recommended specs of an Intel i5-4590 or AMD Ryzen 5 1500X or greater. And finally, you'll need 8GB of RAM. Now, at the time of this beta release, only the following graphics cards are currently supported, and they include the NVIDIA Titan X, the GTX 1070, GTX 1080, GTX 1600 series and the RTX 20 series graphics cards. More graphics cards will be added during the beta and Oculus are currently working with AMD to add more AMD cards to the compatibility list in the future. On your PC, you'll need to be running the latest Oculus PC software, which at the time of this video is version 1.43 via the public test channel. So make sure that is enabled under the beta tab. You'll also need a high quality USB cable to connect the Quest to your PC. Now I've tested a lot of cables over the past week or so, and it's become very clear that that not all cables are made the same. Now, the only cable that worked when the update released earlier on today is the Party Link cable. It has a right angle USB C connector on the Quest side and a USB C connector on the PC side. It does also come with a USB C to USB A adapter. However, the only way I could get this to work with my setup is by using the Party Link with the NVIDIA Virtual Link USB C port on my graphics card, which is an RTX 2080 Ti. However, other users have reported that the cable works works absolutely fine when connected to the USB-C port on their motherboards. The other limitation of this cable is that it's only three meters long, meaning that you don't have much slack to move around, which may be unusual for many of you Quest owners out there. So just be mindful that you don't damage your PC or Quest, or more importantly, yourself by moving too far away from your PC. Now, I tried many other cables with the update, including the Amazon Basics, Uni, Ugreen, and Belka cables with no joy. I also tested the PartyLink cable with a StarTech USB-C PCIe adapter card, which also doesn't work right now. But I'll continue to test cables as we get updates from Oculus and they expand the support. Now the official Oculus Link cable will be a five meter USB-C to USB-C fiber optic cable, and it will be releasing at the end of the year for 80 US dollars. This may sound expensive for a cable, but as it's been proven in my testing today, it's actually very hard to find a good quality cable that can transfer both data quickly along with power for charging at that length. So that's likely gonna be the one to provide the best VR experience when it releases. Another cable worth checking out is the Anchor cable, which has been recommended by Oculus themselves until their official cable is released. Now I haven't tried this cable personally myself, but I'll keep you updated in the comment section when it arrives, which will be any day now. And I've also linked this in the description down below. Now let's move on to the setup. Open the Oculus app on your PC, turn on your Oculus Quest and make sure you can get into the home environment. 
Then connect the USB-C cable to your PC, and in my case via the NVIDIA Virtual Link Connector, and then the other end to your Oculus Quest. Next, you'll see the Quest appear in your devices section in the Oculus PC app, and then you'll be prompted in the Quest headset to enable Oculus Link, and then just select enable, and it will take you straight to the PC Oculus Home in the Quest headset. Now, if you're finding the audio a little bit too quiet in the Quest, ensure that you turn the volume up by using the settings in Oculus Dash. So now for the fun part, let's test it out with some games from both Oculus and Steam VR. Okay, so now I've got the Quest connected to the PC via the Oculus app. And as you can see, it's green. So I'm just gonna put the headset on now and see what happens. It looks beautiful. Latency is pretty good. I can shake my head around and uh, I'm not noticing any artifacts or crazy latency. Graphically, it looks great. Tracking is fine. Obviously I'm limited right now because uh, the cable's only three meters long. But let's go into the Stormland, maybe get into a bit of a fight with some Tempest. Uh, but yeah, so far, pretty impressed. So yeah, I'm not noticing any obvious latency. Frame rate is solid. The visuals look good. No complaints right now. Pretty impressed, to be honest. Eat it, noob. <laughs> nice. So I noticed a little bit of slowdown there, but really... Nothing that's game breaking, I would say. Okay, now let's try uh, another game. Let's try uh, Asgard's Wrath. Okay, and here we are in Asgard's Wrath. This is my little sharky companion. Hey dude, what's up? And uh, just like Stormland, the game looks incredible. It runs pretty well. Latency seems pretty low. Frame rate seems absolutely fine. More than playable, absolutely. Uh, and let's see if we can find some chumps to take down, get into a bit of a sword fight. Oh, here we go. Come on, buddy. <laughs> go on, mess him up, shark. Mess him up. Oh, we missed him. Nice work. Nice work. Right, let's move on then to the next test, which will be a Steam VR game. Well, it looks like it's working, even though it said that it wasn't the headset wasn't supported. It looks like it's working absolutely fine, which is super nice. I check the mag. Yeah, feels exactly like it would playing the game on Rift. So now I've tested the Oculus Link update with some games, here's my conclusion. With this update and the future update of hand tracking, the Quest is really going from strength to strength, which is amazing, but it's a real shame that we're not getting similar pushes forward on the PC side with the Rift S. Playing PC VR content on the Quest offers a much higher fidelity experience than you've ever experienced on the Quest before. And if this is your first time playing PC VR content, I think you're gonna have your mind blown. Graphically, it looks on par with what the Rift S can provide, although it's running at 72 hertz, which is slightly lower than the Rift S 80 hertz. But to be honest, I didn't really notice much difference in the headset. The latency was acceptable using the Party Link cable. It's just a shame that it's only three meters long, which is quite limiting right now, and it only works in my test with the NVIDIA Link USB-C port. I think you'll struggle to find a cable that can perform well over five meters, which is why Oculus ended up developing their very own proprietary cable. So as I explained in this video, I really struggled to find cables that worked. So if you found a cable that works, please share your findings with the community in the comments below. Of course, playing PC VR content on Quest isn't necessarily anything new. Many people have been doing this wirelessly since the Quest launched by using apps such as RiftCat, ALVR and Virtual Desktop. And I've covered how to do this in a separate video, which I'll link up here now. However, to achieve this wirelessly, you'll need a solid five gigahertz Wi-Fi connection and you'll need to use Revive with Steam to get Oculus games to work. By using a tethered solution, when it works, Oculus can guarantee that you'll have a good VR experience with minimal latency. And I think overall, this is a great step forward for VR in general. And I hope other manufacturers follow this idea of a headset that can do both standalone and PC-based VR in a single headset in the future. Okay, that's the Oculus Link software now released in beta for people to try with their Oculus Quest. Now, ever since the Oculus Link update was announced, I get asked all the time, which headset should I buy now? The Oculus Quest with Link or the Oculus Rift S? And now that the update's live and it works surprisingly well, it's gonna be a much harder decision for consumers to make. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think? Which headset do you prefer and why? And also let me know which PC VR game you're most excited to play now on your Oculus Quest. 
I'd love to know in the comments down below. Now, as soon as the official Oculus Link cable releases, I'll do another video comparing how it performs. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and turn on notifications so you can get updated when that video goes live. Leave a like if you like the video and you found it useful. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.